Hey guys, it's Libby. Sorry for the wind. If you can hear it, it's crazy loud and there's nothing I can do about it. The North Sea, she is a harsh mistress. Today I'm gonna to be doing a sort of long-term TBR for a sort of project to read the literature of the American Renaissance. Um, like, I'm not really, <laughs> this isn't a very strict project. This is just sort of a TBR of books that I have in my mind and that I want to get to. Um, uh, so I'm not gonna be like reading one a month or trying to get through these all by the end of 2022 or something like that. This is gonna be more similar to my um, unannounced project to read um, uh, late Georgian literature, um, which sort of ended on a whimper rather than a shout um, because I just realized I didn't really like most Georgian novels. Um, so uh, hoping things go a little bit better with the American Renaissance. So the reason I'm making this video is mainly um, to get your guys' advice uh, on if any of these books are terrible uh, and I should just skip them, um, or if there's any uh, American Renaissance literature that is essential, which is not on my list. And I figure it can also serve as a guide for other people who are interested in reading the American Renaissance. Um, so let's briefly describe the American Renaissance. Um, the United States, it's called the American Renaissance. I honestly think it should be called the American Naissance. Um, the United States was not really producing a lot of literature um, for its first well, the United States as a country, as an independent country for the first like 50 years of its existence. For my purposes, I'm defining American Renaissance literature as um, the works produced by United States residents and citizens from uh, 1830 to the Civil War. So this also largely coincides with the beginning of the Victorian period in England, and they have some similar interests, um, such as romanticism. But American literature at the time is also being highly influenced by the debates about slavery and the Transcendentalist movement, which is a philosophical and kind of moving into religious um, movement uh, about the inherent purity of the person um, and how they can be corrupted by society. So on to the TBR. Please let me know if any of these are bad. Uh, first, first one, obviously Moby Dick. I, the, these, I'm not planning to read these all in order, but I do kind of feel like I should start with Moby Dick. So starting with something that is kind of already nostalgic by the time it's being written in the 1850s. Um, then I've got some works by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Um, I, I definitely want to read Scarlet Letter and The House of the Seven Gables, although I feel like The Scarlet Letter might be bad. Guys, is, is The Scarlet Letter bad? Um, I'll see how those two go, and if I like them, then I want to continue with Rappaccini's Daughter, Twice Told Tales, and A Blithedale Romance. Um, moving into some nonfiction, uh, I want to read uh, Thoreau's Walden and Civil Disobedience. Um, and then I've also got a fair bit of poetry on this list, a lot of American poets from this time. I want to read Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. I understand that Leaves of Grass, he like rewrote it um, many times throughout his life, and so there's different versions available. If there's a particularly good version, would love to know about that. Um, and then Edgar Allan Poe. So I at some point downloaded like the complete poetry and short stories of Edgar Allan Poe. Um, he also wrote like journalism and book reviews and I think that's too much. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna worry about his more journalistic pursuits. Um, I'm gonna focus on his literary pursuits. So um, I have read some of Poe's poetry, which I mostly enjoyed. So I think I'm just gonna read the complete poems Poems are short and easy to get through. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to read the complete short stories, because he wrote a lot of short stories. And I've read several, some of which I liked and some of which I didn't. So the post short stories that I enjoyed were um, Cask of Amontillado, uh, Mask of the Red Death, and then uh, Telltale Heart is fine. I think if I had originally read Telltale Heart in like the 1840s when it was published, it would have been amazing. But um, it sort of turned its, like, it has become a cliche with how classic it is. 
Um, so yeah, I, I'm pro Telltale Heart, but I'm not fawning over it. Um, and then some post short stories that I did not like were The Fall of the House of Usher, so boring, and then his like mystery one, Murders in the Rue Morgue, um, which was sort of a proto Sherlock Holmes story. That was terrible. <laughs> Would absolutely rather read the complete works of Sherlock or the complete Sherlock Holmes stories over and over again and in exchange for never having to read uh, another Murders in the Room Morgue. And I think that detective character gets used in a couple other stories. Don't want to read those. So, yeah, if this, um, if you're a Poe expert and you can divine my Poe tastes from that selection, uh, let me know which short stories I should read. Um, okay, then we've got James Fenimore Cooper's The Last of the Mohicans. Now, I know that this is in a series of five books, and Last of the Mohicans, even though it is the most famous, is the second book. So let me know if you have opinions on, like, whether I need to read the first book before Last of the Mohicans, and to what extent it is valuable in just reading that one outside of the rest of the books. Um, then, uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe's, uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin and Dread. Um, those are her two anti-slavery works. Um, Uncle Tom's Cabin is the most famous, and then Dread, she actually wrote, um, sort of attempting to address some criticisms that Uncle Tom's Cabin had gotten from both Northerners and Southerners. Um, uh, but she didn't, she also wrote some more sort of lighthearted romantic stuff, which uh, I'm interested in. Um, so I've got The Minister's Wooing and The Pearl of Oars Island, which is slightly difficult to say. Um, and then one, for one of these books, I actually own a physical copy. Um, that's the Portable Frederick Douglass. Um, this is the, just the Penguin collection. It's got all of his first autobiography and selections of his second autobiography, his second and third autobiographies. Um, so I definitely want to read Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, which is his first autobiography, and um, one of his, was this one of his articles or one of his speeches? I think it was an article. Um, what to the Slave is the 4th of July? Um, and then I might just sort of read jump around reading other of his speech transcriptions and journalistic work. Then uh, I want to read the complete poems of Emily Dickinson. I've read quite a bit of Emily Dickinson, but never in like a proper methodical way, just sort of going through all of the works. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then last person is also a poet, um, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Um, Song of Hiawatha is his most famous work, so I'm going to read that and see how it sits. Um, and then we'll potentially move on to Evangeline, The Courtship of Miles Standish, and some of his, like, short poems. I'll, I'll find a collection of his short work somewhere. So those are some books that I will probably get around to in the next, like, five years. <laughs> so I will, um, check back in around 2027, if the world still exists, um, and I'll let you know how those went. <laughs> Thank you all very much for watching. I will see you again soon.